Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using direct stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam on time. In this beam, there are three spans span AB, span BC, and span CD. In the span AB, we have a point load 20 kN. This load is acting in the center. In the span BC, we have an eccentric point load 25 kN. It is acting at a distance of 2 meter from the point B. In the span CD, we have an uniformly distributed load 10 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. In the span AB, the moment of inertia is 2i. In the span BC, it is 1.5i. And for the span CD, it is 0.8i. Length of the span AB is 4 meter. Length of the span BC is 5 meter. And the length of the span CD is 4 meter. Now let us find the fixed end moments and the reactions. First, let us find them in the span AB. In the span AB, we have a point load 20 kN acting in the center. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Here W is 20 and L is 4. After the calculation, we are getting M of AB and M of BA. Now let us find the vertical reactions. In the span AB, we have symmetrical loading. The point load is acting in the center. To find RA and RB1, we have to divide the point load 20 by 2. When we do that, we are getting RA and RB1 as 10. Now let us find the fixed end moments in the span BC. In the span BC, we have an eccentric point load. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WAB square upon L square and positive WA square B upon L square. Here W is 25. A is 2, B is 3, and the total length is 5. Let us apply all of them in the formulas. After the calculation, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now we are going to find the vertical reactions RB2 and RC1. In this span, we have an eccentric point load, so it is a little difficult to find the reactions. We have to take movement either on the point B or the point C. In this span, first I am going to find RB2. For that, I have to take movement about the point C. In this case, I am moving towards the right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RB2 is acting in the clockwise direction. So that will be positive and the distance is 5. So 5 RB2. The point load 25 is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So that will be negative and the distance is 3. So minus 25 into 3. This fixed end moment is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So that will be negative. And this movement is acting in the clockwise direction. So that will be positive. Finally, for RB2, we are getting 16.2 kN. Now, let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0. RB2 and RC1 are acting upwards. So both of them are positive. 25 is acting downwards. So that will be negative. For RB2, we can apply 16.2. Finally, for RC1, we are getting 8.8 .8 kN. Now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions in the span CD. In the span CD, we have an uniformly distributed load 12 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. The formulas to find the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. 
here w is 12 and l is 4 let us apply them in both of the formulas after the calculation we are getting m of cd and m of dc now let us find the vertical reactions rc2 and rd in the span cd we have symmetrical loading we can easily find rc2 and rd for that we have to multiply the udl 12 with the distance 4 and then divide that by 2 when we do that for rc2 and rd we are getting 24 kN in the stiffness matrix method we have to check the number of supports in which slope can occur in the fixed supports there will be no slope but in the hinged and roller supports there will be slope in this beam in the points b and c there are hinged supports so the kinematic indeterminacy of the beam is 2 in the point b we have the slope theta b and in the point C, we have the slope theta C. Now, let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. We are having the coordinates in the points B and C. Because in these points only, we have the unknown displacement, that is the slope. The coordinates represent the movements. Both of the movements should be placed in the clockwise direction now let us see the formula to find the slope values delta matrix is equal to k matrix inverse into p matrix minus pl matrix we know that in this analysis there are two coordinates so inside the delta matrix p matrix and pl matrix there will be two values the size of the stiffness matrix will be 2 cross 2 that means inside the matrix we will have 2 rows and 2 columns. In this formula first let us find the PL matrix. Let us find PL1. Our first coordinate is in the point B. In the point B we have calculated 2 fixed end movements M of BA and M of BC. We have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting minus 8. Let us find PL2. Our second coordinate is in the point C. In the point C, we have found two fixed end movements, M of CB and M of CD. We have to add both of them. After adding, we are getting minus 4. In this formula, now let us find the P matrix. To find P1, we have to check the point B if there is any movement. There is no movement in the point B, so we can apply 0. To find P2, we have to check the second coordinate. In the point C also, there is no movement, so we have to apply 0. In this formula, now we are going to find the stiffness matrix. Before making the stiffness matrix, we have to make the element matrix for the spans. This is the matrix for the spans. We have to memorize this matrix. First, let us make the stiffness matrix for the span AB. The moment of inertia for the span AB is 2i. So, instead of EI, we have to apply 2EI. Length of the span AB is 4. So instead of L, let us apply 4 for all of the elements. Then let us multiply all of the members with 2. From this matrix, we have to take the stiffness matrix elements outside. Our first coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, we have the movement MBA. MBA represents the last row and the last column. So, let us denote the last row and the last column as 1. Now, let us strike out the unwanted rows and columns. We do not want RA. So, let us strike the first column and the first row. We do not want MAB. So, let us strike out the second row and the second column. 
we do not want RB1. So let us strike out the third row and the third column. We have only one member remaining, 2. This is K11. So K11 is 2 into EI, 2 EI. Now let us make the stiffness matrix for the span BC. In the span BC, the moment of inertia is 1.5i. So instead of EI, we have to apply 1.5 EI. Length of BC is 5. So instead of L, let us apply 5 in all of the members. Our first coordinate is in the point B. In the point B, we have the moment MBC. In the matrix, MBC represents the second row and the second column. So let us represent the second row and the second column as 1. Our second coordinate is in the point C. In the point C, we have the moment MCB. MCB represents the last row and the last column. So let us denote the last row and the last column as 2. Now let us strike out unwanted rows and unwanted columns. We do not want RB2. So let us strike out the first column and the first row. We do not want RC1. So let us strike out the third row and the third column. We have four members remaining. This is K11. 1.2 into EI, we will get 1.2 EI. This is K12. 0 0.6 into EI, we will get 0 0.6 EI. This is K21. 0 0.6 into EI, we will get 0 0.6 EI. This is K22. 1.2 into EI, we will get 1.2 EI. Now let us make the element stiffness matrix for the span CD. In the span CD, the moment of inertia is 0.8i. So instead of EI, we have to apply 0.8EI. Length of CD is 4. So instead of L, we have to apply 4 in all of the elements. Our second coordinate is in the point C. In the point C, we have a moment MCD. MCD represents the second row and the second column. So let us denote the second row and the second column as 2. Let us strike out unwanted rows and columns. We do not want RC2. So let us strike out the first row and the first column. We do not want RD. So let us strike out the third row and the third column. We do not want MDC. So let us strike out the fourth row and the fourth column. Only one value is remaining. That is K22. K22 is 0.8 EI. We have found the stiffness matrix elements from three spans, from the span AB, span BC and the span CD. For K11, we have two values. We have to add both of them. 2 plus 1.2, we will get 3.2. For K22, we have two values. We have to add both of them. 1.2 plus 0 0.8, we will get 2. Then let us apply the values of K12 and K21. EA is constant. Let us keep that outside. In the system displacement formula, we have calculated everything. Let us apply the values. EI inverse is equal to 1 upon EI. Then we have to add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this. For this matrix, we have to calculate the inverse. We can apply all of the values inside the calculator and get the inverse. If you do not know how to calculate inverse in your calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the inverse. Then we have to multiply these two matrices. 
you can see the multiplication here finally we are getting the answers we know that in this analysis the system displacements or the slopes which we got finally now let us find the final moments and reactions we have to find the moments and reactions using this formula first let us find the moments and reactions in the span ab for the span ab we have found the element stiffness matrix let us apply that let us see how to make the displacement matrix in the span ab we have the first coordinate which is in the point b in the point b we have the moment mba for the moment mba we have to apply the slope value theta b 2.2516 we can keep 1 upon ei outside for the other values we can simply enter 0 p fixed is the fixed end moments and reactions initially we have calculated the fixed end reactions and the moments for the span a b we can eliminate ei we can multiply these two matrices after multiplying we will get this matrix after adding these two matrices we will get the reactions ra and rb1 the moments mab and mba now let us find the final moments and reactions in the span bc we have made the element matrix for the span bc let us apply that let us see how to make the displacement matrix in the span bc we have two coordinates in the points b and c we have the coordinates in the point b we have the moment mbc for the moment mbc we have to apply the value of theta b in the point c we have the moment mcb for that moment we have to apply the value of theta c for the other values we can enter 0 then let us enter the fixed end reactions and the moments after the calculation in the span bc we are getting the reactions and the moments now let us find the fixed end moments and reactions in the span cd for the span cd we have formed the element stiffness matrix let us apply that let us see how to form the displacement matrix in the span cd in the point c we have the second coordinate in the second coordinate we have the moment mcd for the moment mcd we have to apply the value of theta c for the other values we can enter 0 for the span cd we have calculated the fixed end moments and the reactions let us enter them after the calculation in the span cd we are getting the reactions and the moments in this analysis we have calculated all of the moments to get rb we have to add rb1 and rb2 so that we will get 26.6 kN. to get rc we have to add rc1 and rc2 we are getting 33.69 kN. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Here the bending moment diagram by superposition method. I have analyzed this beam by slope deflection method, moment distribution method, stiffness matrix method and Kani's method. All the links are given below. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.